Okay, folks, I'm starting a live walkthrough of one of the uh, satellite events of the India Art Fair. And uh, this is part of the Gondwana Art Project uh, exhibition. I'm turning this around to show you Sandeep, who is going to be leading us through this walkthrough. And I love Gondwana Art Project. I mean, the work they do is pretty fantastic, and I've been looking at it for a few years. And you'll soon see why I find this so interesting. So, hi. Hi, hi. Thank you. So, uh, first, uh, a little bit about Gondwana Art Project, if you don't mind. Gondwana Art Project is focused on tribal artists. Um, who are all based in central India on the plateau of India, that's, which is called, uh, in geological terms, it's called Gondwana. And that's why we focus on this area because most of the tribes live in uh, that region. Okay. This includes uh, Gon, Hil, Varli, we have um, Sorai, Kovar, Petkar, we've got Baigas, and we've got Kurumba. So lots of uh, tribes which have got fantastic art which used to be done. Uh, in very primitive styles or, you know, in their homes or on their, uh, you know, vessels or things like that. And which is now getting uh, sort of converted into um, canvases or, uh, you know, paper so that it can be brought out and people can see it. It's been done over several years. What we are trying to do in the Gunmana Art Project is trying to get them to do more modern, more contemporary style of work. Uh, to use their skills uh, in a more sort of um, way where you know it's, it's sort of globally accepted. It's got a much wider audience. So you'll see here what we've done is uh, in this section we have also um, uh, you know looked at uh, how we can use some sustainable uh, initiatives where we've used um, old phonograph uh, records, unusable records program records which uh, have been hand painted by gold artists. We've um, taken uh, these records, we've sent them to the artists. All of the artists live in their own homes in remote villages. So where where are Gond artists? After you just said that Gondwana covers all of central India. Yes, Gond artists are um, essentially in Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Uh, they live uh, mostly in Patangar. Uh, but also a lot of them live in Bhopal and then some of them live in Omaria, some of them also live in Dindori village, but around Patangar, Patangar area. And that is in? In Madhya Pradesh. In Madhya Pradesh. Yes. So uh, all the artworks in today are by artists which are in the Gon, from the Gon? No, we, we have focused on uh, Gon, uh, Bheel and Bali in this exhibition. Okay. And uh, this exhibition is also about showing uh, similarities with Australian Aboriginal art, the art of First Nations from Australia. So we've got about uh, 10 pieces of artworks from Australia, which I will show you on the other side. And we'll discuss there yeah. why they come under the Gond, why you connect yeah, them with the Gond project. Uh, yeah. It is a, it's a sort of a, uh, you know, a very, uh, uh, I would say, um, peculiar uh, thing that uh, the art from a region which is so many thousands of kilometers away is so similar uh, to uh, travel art from India. And we'll, we'll have a look at that. Okay. It's, uh, there is no um, uh, evidence of any direct connection. But the art is exactly alike. Yes. <clears throat> and and here, uh, the other other remarkable thing is that what we've done is uh, we've um, uh, got all these artists to work from their homes uh, in remote villages, uh, and uh, you know all of them are mentored with by uh, the Gondwana Art Project designers, and uh, everything is done you know digitally. We send them images, we taught them how to use uh, smartphones, and they create this art sitting in, in their homes. Uh, a lot of them are women artists. Uh, this is a uh, collaboration with uh, a new company called New, new Art. Um, and uh, they do... Uh, into, you know, moving images which create additional interest for the young collector. And uh, also, uh, you know, once we've digitized it and put it on uh, a screen, what it means is that you can have multiple uh, art artworks on the same screen. You have one uh, sort of uh, 
artists in your house and you have multiple artworks on it. So this is very interesting collaboration that we've done. It really and, is. Yes. And you continue to see a lot of the uh, hologram records here uh, by different artists, Anita Sham, it's uh, Rambai Tikam. Rambai is uh, a 70 year old uh, woman and she does fabulous uh, art. She's um, uh, also uh, very keen to learn to do uh, new things, not just the young artist, but also at her age, she's happy to experiment. She's happy to sort of look at uh, things out of the box and try and create something very new, uh, which is very interesting for us because uh, <laughs> the, uh, the talent of these artists is enormous. You can see that, uh, you know, they've um, uh, used the medium. They've never used this medium before. Which is uh, acrylic. Which is uh, essentially, uh, you know, a, a, a vinyl. And okay. they painted on a vinyl, right? Okay, so uh, and, phonogram uh, record, yeah. And uh, it's a small piece, but they've had all their stories. And this is a uh, herd uh, of cows. Uh, you know, you've got some jungle stories here. The owl, it's you know, so all sorts of typical um, grown artworks that we see here. Uh, a lot more sophisticated colors versus uh, uh, other artists. So, Kishan, Suike, uh, Anita Sham. So you can see that, you know, the color variance. Different artists will be doing different kind of things on how they've been uh, mentored by the designer. Uh, they use softer colors. Thank you. So, we'll, so, yeah. we'll walk that side. Yeah. The main right? so this Do you is feel like, Bikaner House is an odd choice? I mean, a royal house for tribal art. Yeah, but you know, art has to evolve. <laughs> and tribal art today is, yeah, that's the reason we call it modern tribal, right? Because that's the title of the art, uh, the show. Modern tribal. It's no longer how it was seen in the past. Today, I think uh, tribal art has to compete with, uh, you know, contemporary art. Everywhere else in the world, uh, it is uh, competing with contemporary art. In fact, if you talk to the Australians, the uh, First Nations art is the biggest export of art from Australia today. Bigger than uh, other contemporary art. So it is seen as contemporary art. Yeah, there's the most expensive pieces there are. Absolutely. So, uh, I think this is where uh, art, tribal art is going to head. Uh, because uh, tribal art has got so much culture, there's, uh, you know, in every artwork there is uh, stories, there's uh, folklore. Uh, you know, if you look at just some of these artworks, there's uh, so much happening in each one of these artworks. <laughs> you know, it's on Puri Dev, uh, the Bada Dev, uh, which is the, 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 the deity that they uh, revered in uh, owned uh, tribes. Bada Dev is uh, the god of the jungles. So where do we get to read these stories? Because so when we talk to the artists, they narrate the stories to us. You okay. know, we uh, ask them, okay, you know, you explain to us what what are the subjects that you would like to paint on. And he would typically tell us that he'd like to do a Bada Dev. And uh, Suresh, for example, has done Bada Dev in many different forms. So we told him that let's try and do something which is, uh, is there a form? And he said, no, there is no form. And we said, okay, let's try and do something which is formless. So this is completely formless. And so you, I mean, there are some eyes, but you, <laughs> there is no real form in this. Right? But a young collector sitting in Bombay with this on his wall, does he have any idea what's on his wall? See, that's the point. I mean, this has got so much interest. If it was just a very simple, straightforward man, let's say, it won't be that interesting. There's so many things happening here. There are, uh, you know, trees growing. There are some places that are water. There are some other uh, elements. You can see, you know, uh, some uh, uh, women here. There are faces. There are lots of eyes. So it's, uh, uh, it, it's very intriguing. And I think that's what art should do. It, it needs to intrigue. Uh, 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 this is a great example of a very modern tribal art. Um, you know, Santoshi is one of our star, uh, 
performers in this project. And uh, she's the daughter of uh, Narvata Prasad Tikal, a uh, very famous school artist. And uh, uh, very, very skilled, but she was doing uh, typical gold artworks which you, know, you would get at any other uh, gold art show that you go and see. A tree and two animals, or three animals, and that's, that's what you see. And uh, we asked her, because of her talent, we asked her, are you prepared to sort of experiment with, you know, the artworks might not be good enough, sometimes you make mistakes, etc. Uh, we said, you don't worry about the outcome, uh, we are not worried about the outcome. Uh, and she said, yes, she's happy to experiment. So she experimented with the uh, uh, designers and she's come up with some brilliant works. You'll see a lot of them. She's done some very abstract works, yet they've got some meaning into it. I mean, she's uh, drawn, you know, some of uh, the uh, keynotes so you. That's why you try to read rhythms. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I hadn't realized that. Yeah. Uh, again, you see the uh, versatility of uh, Suresh Durbe from uh, the Bada Dev. He's made something which is very, very uh, modern and uh, contemporary. Earthlings, he titled it. This is another of his artworks. You know, again, just doing it with black and white. Uh, and he shows his skills by doing very fine lines and dots. Um, you know, the circles also have got a, a dot in within them. Each of the circle you see a dot. So, so it's a very uh, uh, you know fine work that he's done. These are large uh, abstract works which we have encouraged uh, these. Uh, this is a real artist, Sita Mehta. Uh, and typically, real artists would do with dots, only with dots. They would not use any lines or semicircles. Um, we asked them that instead of drawing, you know, just doing animals, let's try and do something completely abstract. And she came up with this uh, brilliant artwork. <coughs> These are some of the smaller ones, again, Santoshi, I was talking about, so, uh, and, you know, you can see all sorts of animals in this. Uh, so typically, a gold artist would do one or two animals, and he said, let's try and also build some abstract into it. Uh, and you see it, it's a very abstract um, painting, yet it has got all the animals. It's got the elephant, you can see the elephant, you've got, you got the dust. <laughs> And you know, so it's uh, birds and all sorts of things. Like that. So she did a series of these. We asked her to do about uh, 10 or 12 of them, and she did a series of them uh, on paper. This is again a similar example uh, done by another uh, artist, uh, Ramesh Man. Uh, he's a gond artist. And gonds, uh, while they use lines, dots, um, semicircles, in this, he's only used dogs. Um, so it's a more like a wheel style, but he's a, he's a gone artist. And these are very, very similar to the First Nations art of Australia. Very much. Very similar. And you'll see some of those as we walk through this exhibition. Um, that's the title of the exhibition, Modern Travel Connecting Traditions, because um, uh, these are traditional arts, and you know, even in Australia, these are, those are traditional arts in Australia. So you've got some uh, Australian art here, which uh, I'll just show you. This is all uh, Australian art. This is uh, by Sarita King, the one on the bottom. And she's so really she's expensive she's, nowadays, uh, right? Uh, I, I, I don't know what you mean by expensive. It's <laughs> not as expensive as modern uh, or you know our modern masters, uh, but she does quite well. Yeah. And uh, she's going to be ex exhibiting also at the India Art Fair. Okay. So she's going to be present here in the next uh, few days. She, she should be at the show also. So these uh, one, two, and that three okay. are Sarita's artworks. These have come from Neeram. We've collaborated with the uh, New England uh, uh, Museum of uh, Art in uh, Armida. It's called New, New England Regional uh, Art Museum. Sorry, Neeram. Okay. Um, so this is from Australia, and uh, this is all the Aboriginal art.
So you can see the similarity between uh, what is being done by our artists and what is done in Australia. And typically an Australian artwork of this size, for example, this artwork would cost anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. Uh, in India, you know, our artists are not getting anything close to this. So our attempt is to uh, bring uh, a lot of the uh, tribal artists to the mainstream. And especially uh, the lesser known artists who have uh, who've got a lot of talent, uh, just to help them, I, I shouldn't say help them, more mentor them, because it's really their work. But we are just mentoring them on uh, new design concepts, new color palettes, new styles, uh, using their techniques. So, are they being able to now um, get a living just from making art, or do they still have to do other jobs to make a living? No. In fact, uh, all the artists who work, at least who are of the artists who are associated with our project, they are very happy just doing art because they are earning enough uh, to, and especially because most of them are women, uh, so they are uh, houses with dual incomes because their husbands are doing other work, right. and these women are earning enough, uh, you know, they don't have to do any other work. And we have given them the assurance that whenever they are free, so we don't stop them doing working with any other galleries or any, anybody else. Right. So whenever they are free, they just have to call us and we give them work. And uh, they don't have to worry about the outcome, whether it gets sold or not sold. We just make sure that, you know, that we are supporting their life. Thank You know, these are very, very modern, very contemporary. You can see uh, great color palette um, uh, and very different color palette. Of course, uh, the sensibility of an Australian artist, you can see these uh, are the sensibility of uh, an Indian artist because uh, our artists are more used to bright colors. And that is very evident, even when you look at the abstract works. Like, um, the Australian artist's uh, works are, you know, uh, uh, more sort of toned down, uh, you know, uh, more sophisticated. Uh, but, you know, our artists will also get there. I mean, they will make this. Uh, you can see how much uh, work there is in this artwork. You know, there it's, it's on uh, a village ceremony. There is a young child who's just been born. There is uh, music happening. You know, it's a joyous scene that she's uh, made. Um, Similarly, the other one is, uh, again, see, it's the same artist, with a yes. very similar style. <coughs> and you can almost see references to other cultures and other, you know, uh, so, images uh, from other cultures. So what's happening is that these days, you know, because uh, everybody, even in uh, small cities, smaller villages, they've got access to a smartphone. Exactly. So they are seeing the world. Right? So they are seeing a lot of uh, outside world, a lot of influences of that into their artists coming in. But it could be an African picture for, you know, you've got that whole, uh, uh, so it makes you also think about the connections between different countries and... Yes, uh, and you know, I think uh, in the afternoon I was talking to a group of Australian ladies and they were saying that uh, indigenous art is similar everywhere. Whether you look at Australian art, whether you look at African art, or you look at some of the East European uh, art, indigenous art, it's all very similar, you know, very uh, raw form of art. Um, very interesting thought. You don't think of the fact that... Uh, this is uh, Rahul Sham, again uh, Jyoti VK. So uh, here uh, you see some, again, sophistication of color, you know, so, it's, so this is not a typical bone artwork which will be very bright and have uh, lots of color. We've, uh, uh, we, you know, sort of mentored the uh, artist to try and, uh, you know, make it more sort of um, uh, pastel, I would say, in this case. Uh, and, you know, here again, uh, the intervention in these kind of, uh, uh, you know, artworks is uh, how do we do something with a lot of background which makes it a little bit more abstract. 
if it was just the owl, you would see it very easily. Now, of course, because of the eyes, your focus goes there. But yeah. otherwise, it's become like a more abstract. Word. It's almost like a mosaic, the yeah. kaleidoscopic <laughs> effect of. Uh, so that is the idea. You know, that can we create something out of the box? Uh, a lot of the storylines are there, uh, and then you start developing on that. So every artwork is discussed. We have a discussion with the artist uh, on what they want to do, what is the story behind it, and then uh, there'll be some ideas discussed that okay, can we do it in this color palette? Uh, should we use this design concept? And then you know, leave it up to the artist to come up with. And when does it figure into the rest of their work as well? Does it filter in? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, so. You know, we started working with Santoshi and asked her to do a series on botanicals, for example. Right. And uh, she's done some fabulous uh, botanical work. Now, this is this is incredible. This is like I can almost see a Japanese influence to this through a camera. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I would say uh, yeah. You could possibly say that. I mean, Japanese would be uh, maybe uh, far more. Sort of I, know. Finer. I know, but look at the various yeah. uh, circles that go into yeah. this one. So she uh, may have, uh, you know, she may have seen some images of uh, artists, artists' works. Like that. She's, uh, you know, obviously been influenced by that. But uh, she has developed some eight to ten, uh, you know, botanical artworks, and all of them have been very well appreciated by people. These are very abstract. Very funky. And you can see again, you know, this is the style that uh, you would see in Australia. Yeah. Uh, but more colourful. At least those ones are yes, more colourful. Yes. And uh, Chandrakali Kusham, she's a brilliant artist. Uh, now, can you imagine this is being done in a place where it's hard to find canvas? Of course. They have to go, you know, uh, to Bhopal to bring canvas with you. Live in so it's, uh, Heck, my cousin yesterday couldn't find canvas in Delhi. <laughs> he, he's supporting me up to say, where do you get canvas in Delhi? <laughs> so it's, so the, these two are done by the same artist, yeah. Chandra Kali yeah. uh, This is Ramesh Vyam. Again, the use of dots and the color. Uh, this is a very brilliant composition. I asked him, what have you done? He says, um, it's uh, when we discussed it initially. He says, "I'll do a uh, a bed sheet." Humare yahan pe wo you you know Chee -chee. how they stitch that yeah. different cloth? Yeah. And they uh, add up that cloth and make a bed sheet out of that or a bed cover. So he said, "I'll do something on that." He said, "Okay, but uh, you know we need to make it a little bit uh, as if it's uh, not straightened. It should be you know so that's his." <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, work on this uh, tiger project. We uh, we just decided to focus on this because of you know obviously uh, tiger being an endangered uh, species and uh, we need to do everything to bring focus on that. But also the fact that uh, the Gonds live very close to the jungles and they have a special relationship with the bar. So you know a lot of Gond art you see on tigers. Um, so they would paint the tiger. Here we said okay we'll get you a uh, you know, FRP tiger made, and you paint the tiger, do a story on it. So he's done a complete story on this uh, tiger. You see, there are fishes in it, uh, it's long, uh, you know, and they live close to the Narvada, so they typically have, would have a, uh, a scene where they'll have water on the other side of the sea. Down to the face, and I'm in love with your Ganesh. Yeah, it's uh, again very modern, uh, you know, very stylized Ganesha. And those are Varlis. Okay. So how did you decide to include two Varlis in the show? Varli also, uh, you know, they are part of the Gurmana region. Okay. Uh, and you know, we wanted to show some variety because. Just didn't want to focus it only on bone or bean. Just to show the brilliance of the artist. Look at how much work has gone in in, in this artwork. And just the net that he's made, and 
each one of the, you know, each one of these figures is different. Perfect. Thank you so much. This Pleasure. has been really fun. Thank you so much.